Hey y'all, I'm Damon Oates, founder of Deco Exchange. Who else has heard that crafting is just a hobby? I turned my love of crafting into a thriving multi seven figure company, surrounded myself in an amazing community, and met some amazing business owners along the way. I'm here to show everyone that makers mean business. What is up, you guys? It is Parker with the Makers Mean Business podcast. Y'all, in the past, I have been interviewing a few different people. We've had some really interesting episodes, but today I am just talking to y'all. I don't have any guests here. It is just me. And what I want to talk about is scaling your business. Um, I know that's a pretty broad topic, but I have a few tips and tricks um, as well as like the process that we use whenever uh, we are trying to you know, grow our business, hire a team member, whatever it might be. There's a few really key things that we do. And I I just wrote them all out here and I just want to go over them really quick on what I think is important and what I think you guys should be doing when you're thinking about whether it be, uh, you know, changing your budget, spending more money, hiring a team member, whatever it might be. So the first thing I recommend you guys do is examine your budget. On this point, I I wrote examine your budget, but in in reality, it could be uh, change your budget, control your budget, whatever whatever you guys think. uh, Once once you hear the full description, you'll kind of understand what I mean. But the thing is, you guys need to understand cash flow, right? So in your business, you're obviously getting money in and money is going out, but you need to break down all of the ways that money is going out. So one thing that we do is every month we examine all of the different buckets that money goes into and you know where it's going and what it's going for. So a few broad generic buckets that I'm talking about. So one might be utilities. Um, I'll use the warehouse, for example. Um, for those of you guys, maybe it's a new listener, maybe you've never heard of us before. Uh, we have a 15,000 square foot warehouse. We uh, fulfill physical products ourselves. Uh, So this is a good example of how we do the budgeting for that. So every month I'll look at the cash flow. I'll see what's coming in and I'll see what's going out. But specifically what's going out, I want to know where that money is going. Is it buying material? Is it payroll? Is it uh, utilities? Is it uh, general overhead expenses? Is it, you know, expendable products like paper, ink, uh, pens, whatever it is. So I break down every single dollar that goes out. So I know at the end of the month, I don't have to always run that report or be that detailed. But once I get an average of all these numbers, I can get a percentage of all this. So no matter how much money comes in, I can get a general idea that, you know, maybe 20% goes to payroll and 30% goes to material and 10% goes to profit. Y'all profit is the big thing, right? You want to know how much money you're actually making, not how much money is actually coming in, right? The difference between gross profits and net profits. The first thing I I would challenge you guys to do is to look at all of your cash flow and figure out where all of this money is going. Uh, The the important thing here is you just, you know, you know, whenever you make a sale, how much money did you actually make? I think a lot of people don't even know that or can't even answer that, you know, like snap of a finger. They don't know. They don't know. And I think it's really, really important, especially as you continue to grow when you're making sales, how much money are you actually making? Because, you know, having a a hundred dollar sale on Etsy is great and all, but how much money did you just make? Did you spend $120 on supplies? You don't know. Uh, so I challenge you guys to, to examine your budget and really understand where all of the money is going and what buckets each of the, the outgoing dollar is going into. Y'all, the next thing I recommend when scaling your business is invest in yourself and your business. So whether that be personal development or business development, and honestly, whether that be with, with Damon and I or with any other business coach or any other course, time is money, you guys. And spending a little bit of money to save yourself some time in the long run is a huge way to help scale your business. Having all of the answers or all of your questions answered all in one spot really quickly is invaluable. You don't have to spend time on Google. You don't have to spend time going through YouTube. You don't have to to sift through all of the, the terrible business advice that's out there. And you know, well, hopefully, you know, the person that you buy a course from or the person that you call your business coach is someone that you can trust and someone that you know is either doing what you're trying to do, has done it before or knows how to do it. So there, there's really a lot of power in investing in your business. And having specifically a business coach or some courses through whatever it is that you're trying to achieve. I know a lot of our listeners, they sell online, they sell they sell craft products, right? It's makers mean business. So a lot of makers are listening to us. Um, so there's people out there who teach you how to sell on Etsy. There's people that teach you how to build a Shopify store. There's people who teach you how to, uh, you know, get paid views on your products, get organic views on your products. There's, there's all kinds of 
of coaching out there. And I just challenge you guys to, to find someone that resonates with you. Uh, whether, whether that be Damon and I or not, I mean, PS, you can find us at damonsbusinesscoaching.com. But even if it's not us, finding someone to help you grow your business is key. Uh, you don't have to do it alone. You don't have to be a solopreneur. You can find help and there are people out there that provide the service that you need. So that is, is point number two, invest in yourself and your business. Y'all, I didn't even talk about investing in yourself, uh, but that, that should be something that's brought up. It could be a whole nother point in itself, really. Whether it be your mental health, your physical health, your emotional health, your family, everything, like take time to invest in yourself as well and grow as a person. Uh, there, I, I think there's a lot of power in um, the saying, it's not about the destination, it's about the journey. So just realize that you're on a journey and there's parts that will help you grow and help you become a better person, a better entrepreneur, a better wife, husband, son, daughter, whatever it is. Take that time to invest in yourself and become a better person as well. Yo, I, I got off a, the, the reason I brought this up, I got off a coaching call not long ago and we were talking about um, emotional health, specifically uh, therapy. I know um, I have a few friends that I'm interviewing in, in future podcasts that we've already recorded, but they are some of the ones who I guess they kind of shed the light on sharing how important therapy is. It's all great to have a business coach and it's all great to go to the gym, but your mind is is your mind is weak as well unless you train it, unless you control it, unless you harness the power. So even just having a good mental fortitude is, is something that comes with having therapy and uh, having the correct mindset. And this all plays into your business. So make sure that your mental health is in check as well, as well as your emotional health, as well as just the health of your overall business by getting a business coach and making sure that you're hitting all the all the marks that you need to hit. Y'all, last but not least is hire help. So y'all, this is the one that I want to talk about the most. Um, I did just launch an ebook. It's on decoexchange.com. It's called Scaling Your Business with Assistance. Y'all, this is one thing, probably the, the most asked question that we get is how do you guys do it all? Like, how do you do it all? Uh, when do you sleep? All that kind of stuff, y'all. We don't do it all and we get pl we get plenty of sleep. We have help. We have help. Over the last two years, we've grown our team from like four people to probably, I want to say we're at like 16 or 17 now. And, uh, you know, maybe four or five of those are physically employees in the warehouse. But we have a whole slew of virtual staff that helps us do all of the things, y'all. We don't do all of the things ourselves anymore. We have all of the help. So I'm going to break this one down a little further because this is, this is the meat of this podcast. And this is what I want you guys to really dive into. So one thing that I noticed that people don't even have off the top of their head is what is your time worth? So y'all, to give you a little background, Damon and I are both from a contractor background. We worked in oil and gas. We worked as contractors. So guess what? We had a billable rate. So that meant that every hour we spent working on a project, we got to bill someone X amount of dollars. And what that means is that whenever I have to stop doing something, or whenever I have to spend an hour doing something, I automatically revert back to that mindset. I have this number in my head that my time is worth this much amount of money. So that makes it really easy. If I'm, let's say I'm editing a video. If it takes me two hours to edit a video and my personal rate is $100 per hour, two hours, $100 an hour, that's $200. If I can pay someone to edit a video for a hundred bucks, guess what? I just saved myself a hundred dollars because with that extra hour and with that extra hundred dollars, I can invest my time into something else that could potentially make more than a hundred dollars an hour in my business. So that's the first challenge I give you guys is find out what your time is worth. One easy way to do this is to take an average of what you make every month in your business. And if it's only you, it's really, really easy, right? So you just divide your total revenue by however many hours you work that month and that's your hourly rate so with that information you can find really easily what you can give up and what you can pay for someone else to do because you know what your time is worth in your business the next thing i want to challenge you guys to do is what are you even doing with your time it sounds really basic but i feel like a lot of people and i've heard a lot of people that don't even don't even know what their their time is or what their time is uh, being spent on so one thing i mean we hear a lot about it um through through the, you know, the interwebs or all the different places online is time blocking. I definitely enjoy time blocking. I like it. I don't probably practice it as much as I could, 
But for those of you guys who don't know, it's basically just blocking out your day and assigning certain tasks to, tasks to certain points in the day and certain times in the day. It's like a schedule, right? And you just have to stick to that schedule. But before you even do that, you might just want to even uh, keep a notebook with you for a week or a month and write down every single thing that you do and timestamp every single thing that you do. Whether it be from, you know, waking up, brushing your teeth, taking a shower, cleaning your house, doing laundry, running errands, whatever it is, because guess what? That all reverts back to the first point. What is your time worth? If you just spent an hour doing groceries and your hourly rate in your business is $200 an hour, you can pay someone to go pick up your groceries for you. Yeah. Same thing with a house cleaner. Same thing with a dog washer. Same thing with everything in your business, video editing, making Facebook posts, doing stuff on Pinterest, answering emails. This all goes back to the same thing, right? What is your time worth and what are you spending your time on? The last thing that I'm going to leave you guys with on this hiring help um, point is identify the difference between what you need to do, what you have to do, what you want to do, and what you hate to do. None of those things are the same and there's hardly any overlap between them. Some things you need to do because only you can do it. If you're a maker, maybe that's making your signature product. Maybe it's, um, you know, going to a family event. Maybe it's whatever. You have to identify what all of those things are. And you can do that whenever you keep that log of the month or the week that I just asked you guys to do. And you can identify what was it that you needed to do? What was it you had to do? Maybe you had to answer emails. Maybe you had to go to the phone. Maybe you had to, you know, go to an event or go to a meeting or, or something like that. What did you want to do? What do you actually like doing? Maybe you like answering emails or maybe you like going on Facebook and and finding cute posts to share, or maybe you like going on Pinterest. And then lastly, what do you hate to do? Maybe, Maybe you hate going on Pinterest. Maybe you hate finding those funny memes on Facebook. Whatever it is, bucket all of those things out and put them in different spots. That way you know what you want someone to do for you or what you need someone to do for you. And I think with those three things, you can very easily find out how to grow your business, right? Because it doesn't have to be you anymore once you do this. You know what your time is worth. You know what you're doing with your time. And you know what you don't want to be doing with your time. With those things, it all just comes down to a quick little formula of how much time you're spending on something, what don't you want to do, and then what can you pay someone to do that thing. And then all of a sudden, you have more time to invest in your own business. Oh, that's it. I wrote a whole ebook about this, like I mentioned before. I have all of the workbooks. They're all in that book. They all have blanks. They all have examples. So you can fill it out yourself. You can get that at decoexchange.com. It's called Scaling Your Business with Assistance. I'm super happy with it. Um, It's probably, it's funny, you guys, because this book was actually inspired by uh, our mastermind group, actually, because we sat down, um, for those of you guys that don't know, we host a mastermind event. We have around 20, 23, 24 people in the mastermind. And a lot of the time, they were just confused on, on what do I do? I can't do it all. I have to sacrifice something. But the reality is you don't have to sacrifice anything. You can still get everything done. It just doesn't have to be you. People think that you have to be a solopreneur, but you're not. You're an entrepreneur. You're a maker. You can make stuff happen. It's not, it doesn't just have to be you. So that, that is my advice with you guys. I will, um, I'll go ahead and and summarize again really quick. The three tips I'm going to give you guys is examine, examine and control your budget, invest in yourself and your business, and then hire help when needed. I really do hope that this, this, uh, episode helped you guys. I hope that it maybe shed some light on on what it means to actually get help and what you can get back whenever you actually spend some money in your business and invest in yourself. That is all I got. Feel free to check out the the podcast at makersmeanbusiness.com. Feel free to subscribe. Uh, we are on Apple Podcasts or anywhere you get your podcast, really. But we're also hosted uh, on makersmeanbusiness.com. I can't wait to see you guys next time. Y'all have a good one.